Actually, we'll find out later you can. It's the same wire. Yeah, yeah. They're like, uh, I know this HDMI wire is, is $79, but the gold one is 129 and your HDMI is more HDMI with this. I mean, later on, we will all have them just sitting around our house because they're all like $10 each or $5 each because they were just worthless. Yeah, games. that was a nice scam they had going on. I also, yeah. when I first bought my TV, uh, it was this guy at, what was it, PC Richards, I think. He told me mm -hmm. that I needed this like surge protector box because if I have a, a surge, like it could fry the TV. And it was like 200 and something bucks. And um, I got it, and I'm like, this is just stupid. It's a power strip. Like, yeah. that's what it was. It was like a- That's a, what a surge two, sector is, yeah. A 250, it was like, it was square and all the How plugs much you went into it? it. It was like 250 bucks. You paid $250 for, are you recording? Is this an, is this a, 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 This is a, a cold uh, opening, yes. So- This uh, is a cold opening? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, because I, I, I want to just go off on you. You paid $250? For a power strip? Well, it wasn't like a, he said it was a special surge protector specifically for TVs, and it was like it didn't look like a power strip. Like it was like it was a square thing. I'm surprised you even had the money left over after you bought those magic beans from him. So I had it hooked up for like less than a week, and I'm like, this is stupid. This is this is basically a surge protector. I brought it back, and he's like arguing with me. He's like, no, you're you're gonna fry your TV. All you do is get one power outage, and you have no TV, and I said, uh, I'm going to roll the dice on this one. And I had the TV. I st it's been about 20. I had the TV for about 15 years, and then I gave it to my dad, and my dad's been using it for the last five years. And The guy's, the guy's argument fine. to you is like, listen, you cannot return this. I am employee of the month because no one thought it was possible to sell something to someone this stupid. <laughs> the funny thing is it, uh, it lasted through a few surges. I mean, the TVs, first of all, the TVs aren't that expensive anymore. And I, anyway, I've never had a surge break anything in my house. Have you ever had a, anything break from a surge? No. No, I've had multiple surges on this computer I'm using right now to record this podcast. And, it, and computers, I think, are probably the thing most acceptable to surges, and it did not do anything. I think that's true, and you probably, I guess, should put your 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 computer on a five dollar power strip. Well, that's what um, it's on. But the the problem was uh, this apartment's weird, and the, the like this whole wall is one like per fuse or whatever you call right, it. Right, right. That makes sense sometimes. But it's like the microwave, like the electric uh, kettle, like things that use a lot of resources. So if you have the microwave and the electric kettle on at the same time, the fuse blows. Right, but you just flip you flip the switch and nothing actually breaks though. Right. Also I just just to be sure, I got an extension cord and I moved this computer to this wall. And so if the power goes out again, I flip the switch, but I don't have my computer off. So it's like just to be sure, I bought the two hundred dollar one. I saved yeah. fifty dollars. Yeah. The HDMI thing was such a scam. There's all these like our life is full of scam after scam after scam. Remember when text messages, you had to pay for text messages? It was like 10 cents a text message. It turned out that the, the phone companies, it's almost free to them, but they were charging for the text messages. Oh, you remember when you had to pay to make a phone call and they were cheaper after nine, so nobody called their parents before like 9.01 p.m.? Right, you had night, you had nights and weekends, and then like uh, the old plans were like seven o'clock, but then the newer plans were like nine o'clock. They really like before nine o'clock on a weekday, you were calling no one. Like even nine one one, you're like, I gotta wait till nine one. <laughs> right. Yeah, I I was late to the cell phone game, so it was nine o'clock by the time I got a cell phone. Yeah, I had nine o'clock also, and I remember my first phone plan. It was just supposed to be used basically on nights and weekends. So I think I think my first phone plan was something like ten minutes a month. It was something absurdly low where, like, you couldn't really use the phone during regular hours. Yeah, mine was longer than 10, but it was still pretty short. And texts, I think, were limited to 100 a month or something. Right, which is something that, like, you would blow past so easily, like, now, especially with, like, group texts. Yeah, yeah, forget it. You get a group with text group, going. Can you imagine it's 10 cents a text and you're, you're on a group text and you're just, like, you're like, you want to murder your friends? <laughs> right. I can't pay my electric bill because you guys keep texting. 
the fifty dollar group text chain. Yeah, the uh, things that were scams um, that we all fell for. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, when the internet first came out, it was you had to pay to be on the online. Like you had to pay. You got like when you got AOL, you had like twenty hours a month, and you had to pay above that. Well, now we have a reverse scam where you have to pay to go online for video games, even though you could go online for free for like ten years, and then they're like. What if we just charge you ten dollars a month instead? I don't know this. What, what what are you talking about? Your your son doesn't have that problem. Oh, like, don't you have to get a not... PlayStation account like to, for him to go play Fortnite? Fortnite, you don't have to pay to play. Um, like you can play with other people on Fortnite. You don't have to pay any extra. I know what you're saying you can get like a. I know what you're talking about now. You can get like a PS4 Plus or or Plus account where you can play games. Generally play other games, but uh, yeah. for Fortnite, for some reason, you can play Fortnite without paying any extra. Online. Online, yeah. So he Online. can pay his, play his friends in other houses, and we never have to pay any additional money. Weird. I mean, okay. they, they charge you for, like, in-app, per- like, they get you to buy skins and all well, sorts yeah, of crap. I mean, that's, so. Yeah, that's a thing. But a lot of the games, they're like, if you don't have a, a subscription, you can't, you can't even play online against other people, and it's... Like, Did it well, used to be free to for that. all the games? Yeah, it used to be free for all the games. And then they're like, yeah, it would be it would be better if we just charged you money. So we're just going to charge money now. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. The world is an awesome place. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, I, I wish, like, there's... You'll, you'll see also, like, uh, like, I've noticed I was at the Met game. And I noticed there are more things now. Like, on the mound, there was an advertisement. Like, some brand had advertised, like, a little, like on the mound. Mm-hmm. They had, like, a projection on it. And we were saying how, like, sure, add all the ads you want. Can the ticket price be cheaper? Because they add the ads, they're, they're advertising to us, and they're still char- they're still charging us more money for the tickets. I'm completely fine with the, the ticket price. Have less commercial breaks. Like the NBA yeah, yeah, added, do something uh, ads to make on it the better. jersey. They have uh, ads in the corner during free throws now. They have ads on, like, the billboard by the half-court line. But there's the same amount of commercials, so I'm like... Same amount of commercials, same amount of everything. Like, how about Chargers less money to go to the game? And, like, every time Jalen Brunson scores a point, he goes, I got that because I drink Pepsi. Just, <laughs> he'll say it during the game. Who cares? Just Chargers a little less. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, so, Jake, um, what's going on with you? Um, Not too much. I'm just working and... Uh, Still working on uh, the Brink game and um, not doing much else with my life. How are you doing? I am doing fucking terrible. Um, oh. I, uh, I hurt my back and I have not slept basically since Wednesday. How did you hurt your back? I don't. I, I was working out on Tuesday. Um, I did. So I was doing it's such a dumb thing to have done also. Um, I work out at home. I don't mm-hmm. go to a gym. Mm-hmm. And so I was doing pull-ups. Mm-hmm. And to make the pull-ups harder, I put weights in a backpack and wore them while I did the pull-ups. I don't know that, like, I didn't feel any particular, like, anything that happened during that. Mm-hmm. But the injury, like, developed, like, I started feeling it later in the day. So I'm assuming that had to be, that was the only asinine thing I did that day. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming that was what caused the injury. I don't know what I'm not, not like I'm training for anything and like why the hell am I doing that? Why didn't you um, just do I, more push-ups? Uh pull-ups. Pull-ups. Yeah, well I was kind of st- I wasn't getting more pull-ups. At some point I like I I wasn't able to like I wasn't kind of plateauing so I thought this would be a way to like do a little more strength training. I I don't know why. Like I I I don't know why I'm doing this. It's just in my head I'm like, "Oh, it'd be cool if I could do some pull-ups with some weight and for no purpose. Like there's no like <laughs> no matter how much I can achieve no one gives a fuck. My wife doesn't give a fuck. My kids don't give a fuck. I don't know why I'm doing it. I don't know why I even work out. I like I work out all the time. I still look like I look. It doesn't fucking make a difference. <laughs> so uh, you can't sleep because you're back? Oh, my God. It has been so bad. So I think I have – I'm going for an MRI tomorrow, and I think I have sciatica. Mm-hmm. I don't, have you ever had sciatica? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So basically, my symptoms basically – my lower back is a little tight, not a big deal. My right leg is just in pain. Um, the the right, my hip, like, it's just like, it hurts my, and my um, calf on the right side of it, just dull, throbbing pain the whole day. At nighttime, it's the worst. And basically, 
There was no position. The only position I can do where it doesn't bother me that much is standing up. Mm -hmm. So I just like turn over, turn over, stand up for a little while, turn over, turn over, stand up for a little while. I have slept, I guess, including Wednesday night, I think I slept maybe two hours a night at most. For reference, we're recording on Wednesday, so it's been a full week. It's been a full fucking week. I've been calling my doctor, like asking, like, I'm like, I don't think you understand. I can't give me fucking harder drugs. Um, I need drugs. I need something. You have to, like, they're giving me, like, at first, on Saturday I go, I go to this this walk-in orthopedic place, um, and they give me um, a steroid. All the steroid does is help you not sleep and does nothing about the pain. So I, I have to get off the steroid, but you have to, like, go through the steroid process. Tomorrow's my last day. Then the the, the doctor, get, he's like, oh, it's probably just PT. If you just do six weeks of PT, I'm like, I, I'm going to be dead by next week. I can't do six weeks of PT. I need to fucking sleep. Um, he and So he's like, okay, I'll, I'll give you this whatever. And that, so I took this um, other pen. It's supposed to be like a stronger Advil. Mm -hmm. um, I took it, feel a little better during the day, fine. Then, and he, then, then at nighttime, fucking can't sleep. So I'm like, can you give me like sleep medications? Like, I can't give you sleep medication. Try melatonin. You don't want to mix too much stuff anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, maybe the melatonin will help me sleep through the pain. I sleep from 10 p.m. to like 11.30 p.m. Up the rest of the fucking night because um, the pain is so bad. Um, I called a doctor today. I'm like, he, he, I mean, he's like, well, you have to go to a pain management guy in our practice. I'm, I'm like, what the fuck? Why? What are you the doctor? How There's a separate doctor for pain? Is a separate doctor for everything now. Holy shit. So I have to make an appointment with the pain management guy. Every night I have a different tactic now to like try to figure out how to sleep. So today I didn't take the fucking drug for medic like the well actually you're supposed to take this drug, this Advil, super strong Advil, only once a day. Last night in the middle of the night, I'm like, like I'm so I'm so miserable. I'm like, well, I took the drug like 15 hours ago and not 24. Fuck it, I'm just gonna take it now because I'm I'm losing my mind. Um, and now tonight I'm going to try taking it right before bedtime and hope that will somehow alleviate the pain so I can sleep through the night. I have been just wandering through my house during the night. I watched, I've been watching coming down to our basement TV to watch like episodes of South Park while not sitting on the couch while I'm like pacing while watching it because I can't sit down. Jesus. Um, this is, I am somehow able to sit right now without a lot of pain. Still no blacklist um, though. No blacklist. I, uh. Jay, there's a show called Blacklist, which um very popular show though. Um, so I don't know why I'm introducing it like anyone like no one's heard of it. Um, Jay is obsessed with the show. How many seasons did you watch, Jay? Twenty four seasons? I watched all of them. Ten seasons. Okay, ten seasons. Jay's like, it is the greatest, it is a masterpiece. Is I've never seen a better show. Mark, you have to watch it. I was like, okay, not that I have to, but sure, I'll watch it. I'm like, wow, this show, wow, 20 episodes to go in the first season. Shit. Uh <laughs> Mark's like, I, I don't it... sleep and all I do is watch TV, but I'm still not going to watch the show. Maybe I'll start watching Blacklist. Maybe I'll be like, it, 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 Blacklist, there's a lot of exciting stuff supposedly happening in the show. Um, but maybe I'll try that. Maybe tonight when I'm not sleeping, I'll come down and just watch Blacklist um, until I kill myself. I still don't get why you're like, I'm so strong. Pull-ups aren't tough enough. <laughs> I'm a fucking more... I, <laughs> I'm um, a monster. I, I, I'm just so fucking buff. I have to fill up my backpack with rocks and do pull-ups. It is the dumbest. Is like I am embarrassed <laughs> to admit. I've had to like like the doctor's like, well, what'd you do? Listen, you'll, you won't believe, you won't believe how dumb I am. <laughs> I the just doctor, his eyes are bugging out. He's like, why would you do that? I'm like, because I'm a fucking moron. Does anyone come here because they did something smart? It's like you don't get a gun show like this doing normal pull-ups. And the thing is, I don't look like you would look at me and go, oh, have you ever worked out before? I'd be like, yeah, that's um, it's I don't know why I just been I worked out almost my whole life. And for whatever reason, like, I'm obsessed with the idea. Like, it's not that I have to do so many. It's just like, well, I, I guess part of it because I don't go to a gym anymore. Mm -hmm. So I just like it's easier to work out at home. So I'm not lifting weights. So I wanted something more challenging. I, it, it accomplishes nothing. There's nothing. I don't do better at work because I can do an extra pull up with like, they're not like, hey, Mark, I'm going to have to, you're getting a raise. Why? We heard you did pull ups with a 25 pound plate on your back. That's pretty amazing. That's how you get ahead in our company. <laughs> we're, we're not, we're not like, like, hey, hey, Mark, you got to really work with this. If you can get some extra pull ups with some weight, we'll sell more of the game. I thought you were going to just say something like an old man thing. 
like you know i was doing dishes and my back was at i, I actually pulled my back out doing that once because the sink was is at like too low so i was hunched over at this weird 45 degree angle doing dishes and when i went back up like my back tweaked and i thought you were gonna say something stupid like like an old man like back thing i'm gonna like, start telling people i'm gonna tell people i, I did it doing dishes because that sounds better because at least if you do it if you say that people are like everyone you know you hang out with is old also so they're like yeah i mean it's funny everyone has a story about something stupid like that yeah no one has a story about like oh when i do weighted pull-ups this is pretty self-inflicted yeah yeah this is like <laughs> i know it i just it couldn't be anything else it has to be that and just more i i have this backpack i put plates in it and like I got like five or six pull ups. Yay. Who the fuck cares? <laughs> I'm not like, oh, and you see under uh, under work experience, I have pull ups with weight. <laughs> Did you uh film it like Patrick Bateman in American Psycho? I thought you're not allowed to work out in America without filming it and putting it on TikTok. <laughs> Mark's just like topless filming himself and flexing in front of the camera after every pull up. Jay has no idea. I have I have like millions of followers on TikTok where I just pose naked. I mean, here's me working out. Honestly, if you did like topless pull up videos, you would probably get more views than this podcast. It's really just to say it's not really that because it, people would just be looking with fascination. I'd get like 50 viewers, which would be like they're like an all time. We're going to watch live as Mark throws his back out <laughs> doing pull ups <laughs> with weights. <laughs> listen, listen, guys, I know you guys have been following me from day one. I have to get this. I'm going for a new PR. P P P P P B personal best. <laughs> well, I mean, I hope yeah. you feel better soon, but that is a ridiculous way to hurt your back. Oh, I had to explain to my like. I don't think I fully understood even explained to my wife how I got, I got injured because I think like just the the look of disdain from her. <laughs> like I'm have to put up with this because you're this stupid. So I haven't even told. I don't think I've explained to her. How I, I just said I got injured. I was, overdid it working out. Oh, how'd you overdo it working out? Well, um, I took. Plates, put them in a backpack, wore them, and tried to do pull-ups. <laughs> you know, typical stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, the doctors heard it. Everybody who comes in pretty much has just got plate back injuries. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go back to the doctor and be like, oh, I was kidding about the pull-ups. It was doing the dishes. <laughs> You're like, okay, that's more sane. Yeah, yeah. So when I do the dishes, I attach weights to my back to make doing the dishes harder. <laughs> Mark just puts random weights on different body parts for every activity he does. You ever try mowing the You'd lawn be surprised. with ankle if you, weights? If you put a if you put a fifty pound weight on your arm, brushing your hair is so it builds a lot of muscle. <laughs> I put weights on the lawnmower because the lawnmower isn't heavy enough to push. There are people that like you can get like a weighted vest to go like running in. So to make running more fun, I guess you can wear weights running running. Which I I, I at least haven't done that. Okay, I mean. Um... I don't need that. I just got fat. Now I have my own weighted vest. I don't have to worry about losing it. You should write a review on Amazon. Like, I'm not falling for this scam. I already I already got this for free. <laughs> right. Did you know you can make one for free with chocolate chip cookies? No, so running will 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 make you lose the weighted vest you 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 got for free. True. True. Um so yeah, I am uh and I'm I am looking forward to my um, eight hours of walking around the house and um, trying to put off killing myself tonight. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. Yeah, it's a really nice, like, I um, I did manage to, like, lay on a beanbag chair um, and sleep for a half hour at some point last night. Um, you know what's going to happen now? Yeah. You're not going to be able to work out because of your stupidity, and you're going to lose all the muscle mass that you gained... <laughs> I haven't pull-ups. been able to work out for the last week. I haven't. Been, I, I've barely been able. I did. So another thing I did stupid, just to add to the stupidity, is this hurt a lot. But then I went for a run anyway on Wednesday morning because I was like, eh. I mean, like I'm sure this will. This is like my like, this will be fine when I when I go for a run. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like limping the entire run. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, I'm like like it's 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 amazing how dumb I am. <laughs> So now you're basically Bri. You just can't sleep ever. I, 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 that's all I've been thinking about is how Bri can't sleep. And I, it's really hard to function if you haven't slept in a week. Yeah. Yeah. I've been there. It's not easy. Yeah. 
that should be added to the so first of all i've been telling a lot of people about your idea of having an average person do the olympics everyone mm -hmm. thinks that's that, that may be one of the funnier ideas you've ever had um but why don't we the, for the olympics also like add sleep deprivation <laughs> <laughs> do all the event like you you like just take competitors you have not slept in two days and you have to do like the 400 meters and like people just get dizzy while they're running the 400 meters they had different categories. You could have the dehydration category, the sleep deprivation category. Throw a discus without having slept in a week. <laughs> uh, okay, so Patrick wants us to have a board game discussion. Okay. Um, Jay, how is the board game going? Uh, I don't think he specifically meant the board game that I'm working on. but um... Well, update everyone on the board game. This is, this is big news in the Brink world. Jay, um, Jay and Mark were working on a board game. Now mm -hmm. Jay is working on a board game. <laughs> yes. Mark said I had fun writing the cards. And scene. <laughs> I'm as useful as Dogecoin. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I've been working on, uh, I'm getting a Kickstarter ready. If you type in Brink of Sanity on Kickstarter, uh, the game comes up. It's uh, six categories. We, we worked on them all. We have a lot of cards for each one. Would you rather, a lot of uh, Brink expired, uh, Inspired ones, would you rather, Two Truths and a Lie, uh, Top Fives, things like that. And, um, yeah, it's coming together. Um, and so I'm just waiting to get enough, enough followers on the Kickstarter before I feel comfortable launching. So Jay has been posting advertisements for the Kickstarter on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, probably Instagram also, but I know about the Facebook one. Yes, and Facebook all the also. comments he's getting is, isn't this taboo? Isn't this the game taboo? Mm-hmm. Do you think you should cut that portion of the game because it seems like everyone's confused by the fact that it looks like cat taboo? Yeah, one of the six categories is a, a taboo-esque game. It, it has brink humor, so it's more like adult. Um, but yeah, there's like five, all five comments are saying this is taboo. And I'm like, it's one of the six categories. It's a, it's a different take on taboo. And I, I made it like the last thing you see so you can see everything else first, trying to avoid that problem. And I don't know why everybody is like, this This game is just taboo. The The idea of the game was like, if you've played Cranium, it combines like games that you've already seen together, but all put together. It was like four different games you've seen together, but put together. Yeah. So we decided to combine, I guess, six games you've seen before in some form or another, like Would You Rather, Taboo, but into one card game with more Brink type humor and uh that apparently is lost on on the on people commenting on facebook money well spent money well spent uh also it doesn't have a board so the game is a little quicker it's uh i think it's more fun i took everything that i did not like about cranium and removed it and the, the, yeah i mean the whole thing with the game is supposed to be the idea is that you are having a lot of fun joking around with your friends as you're playing the game because the cards lead to funny conversations yeah yeah I, I just um, uh, I, I also like with our rules, the person reads the card and everybody else playing can jump in on every single card because I was playing cranium with my neighbors and half the people are just sitting watching the other half of the people play every single turn. And I was like, you're, you're, you're not playing more than you're playing. So I wanted a game where you're playing 100 percent of the time, like apples to apples, where you're always kind of in the game. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a it's a amalgamation of a bunch of things like the best of other games that we put together uh but apparently it's just taboo to uh everybody have you saw thought about just taking the brink of sandy logo and just slapping on the game monopoly and selling monopoly <laughs> <laughs> isn't that monopoly buy the game please just buy the game and find out maybe i should just have the ad say this is nothing like taboo that's what every for all of them you should say not taboo not charades, <laughs> not a uh, dictionary. Right. But that that's dictionary. Did you see the word not? Right. <laughs> totally different. Has the word not. Um how many so how many games would you like to sell? Or are you what's your goal for your initial sale? I'm not focused on uh game sales. I'm I'm focused on funding just because I don't have a lot of money saved up. And the more... By the way, if you had a lot of money saved up and you used it for this, I might, I, I, I would get angry at you. <laughs> the, the more you order, the cheaper it is per game. And so I need a certain amount of... 
How much are you trying to raise? The goal is 5,000. Ideally, it would be closer to 20,000. Okay, that, that's a pretty big range. But um, 5,000 on Kickstarter seems like a smaller number in terms of yeah. Kickstarter world. Yeah, so I, we could do 5,000. 10,000, basically, the game happens. Everybody gets their game. I did this basically for free. I could just say I, I made a game. There's no profit. For t- wait, for 10000 say that again? 10000 all the games. You raised $10,000. Yeah. Uh, the game happens. Everybody gets their game. Uh, I get almost no profit. It's basically just. Do you know how to run a business, Jay? <laughs> that's why I want closer to 20 because 20 brings the price. Down. I order more units. The price per unit goes down. Oh. And then you can okay, get so you're more saying- profit. You're saying in the initial, obviously you could always sell more, but if you're if you're ordering for ten thousand dollars or less, you're basically at break even with your costs. Yes, yes. So okay. I I would rather order twenty thousand. Doesn't matter if they sell right away, but eventually, like there will be profit down the road. Have you thought about ordering a million? Because then then they'll be. <laughs> yeah, then they'll be like a nickel each, and they could make a lot of money. But um, yes. Jay, where, where where are you living these days? Well, there was this board game I was making. Anyway, I'm living in a a home made out of the board game. (laughs) And there's almost no way to make money for the expansion. The expansion? Yeah, well, if if there's an expansion, yes. Um, Explain what expansion is. Expansion's an add-on to a game. So so the game has 50 cards in each category, and it's got the dry erase boards, the markers, the, the timer, you know, the bells and whistles. The expansion would just be... 20 more cards for each category in a box. Nothing else. Just cards okay. in a box. And Why can't you make it. money doing that? Because Amazon charges about uh, $5 to uh, store, pack, and ship each unit. Okay. So the expansion would sell for about 10 But I still have to pay to get the game made, which right. is probably going to be 2 or $3.00. So now we're down to $2 per expansion, and that's before any advertising or tax on any of these sales or anything. So it's basically for free. Right. I mean, I guess in theory, you don't have to have Amazon store it for you, but most people like buying items that are Amazon, that go directly from Amazon. Uh, they, they just sell better, basically, if Amazon's... Um, well, I mean, you can have the game on Amazon and store it yourself, but uh, I also just- live in a co-op, and I really don't think... Uh, a pallet of a thousand games showing up in the lobby is going to fly. I'm going to get like fined I, so bad. I would love to do the gate, do the show where the entire background is just boxes of the game. And you're <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. you're like just screaming like, please people in Australia buy the fucking game. I haven't seen my couch in a month. Well, that happened. I was at first, I'm like, I'm going to try and partner with other people who have made games and, yeah. and you know, basically be do like a uh shark tank type of thing like you do here's the game you make the game give me like two dollars a unit and you okay keep the rest. yeah what they call a uh, <laughs> a uh a royalty yeah yeah so um I, I was trying to do that and one guy was showed me a picture of his room and it was that it was a room of boxes he's like i have one game i'm doing this on my own and my whole apartment is boxes and i can't do a second game was he making money? He said it took him three years, but he broke even. Oh, so basically, like your ten thousand dollar thing, he spent three years of his life and has made no money. Yeah, so it's it's all about economies of scale. Like I said, if if I could order twenty thousand worth, not that I'm going to be like rolling in the dough, but there will be some profit, and it will be like worth it. So, um, what if you sold? You got ten thousand and six dollars. That last six dollars would probably be pretty profitable for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'll probably go to ads where people would say it's just taboo. Just taboo. Um, that would be. I mean, it would be. Uh, so, what would your pitch? Let's say, can you take this? Um, can I be the shark? I'll be one of the sharks. Um, I'm not going to do any impression. I'm just going to be one of the sharks, and you, um, you're on Shark Tank, Jay. Okay. Bring, come on, do the pitch. All right. So we got a uh, we got an adult party game. That has... Wait no, but what are you what are you offering? What what deal are you offering? I'm a shark. I want a percentage. Oh okay. So I, I want uh, twenty thousand dollars. Okay. For thirty percent of the game. Okay. So you're saying this game is worth like 
sixty-five thousand dollars. Yes. What do you what do you base that on? Base that on um, tweets. <laughs> I'm ready. I always like, ask you little numbers like, "Oh, what are you basing it on?" You're like, "Hope." Yeah, <laughs> dreams. Dreams, dreams, and hope. That's uh, you have any sales? Well, again, dreams and hopes. <laughs> They're like. Okay, I'll tell you what. We'll give you twenty thousand dollars for ninety nine percent of your company. That's basically what Shark Tank does. They so they they do take large percentages. So the guys are obviously super rich. Why can't they just give like give you twenty grand? If Mark if Mark Cuban gave you twenty grand, he he probably like it's like losing it's like spare change for him. Yeah, he's probably has twenty grand in his couch cushions right now. Why couldn't he just give it to you? Be- and if you don't if he doesn't make money on you, who gives a fuck? <laughs> literal life changing money for me but uh yeah i don't know they they don't i stopped watching because they don't even talk to you unless you're making six figures already like they don't want to do anything anymore they're just like uh yeah we want to call uh you know a chain store and get you in there and then call it a day and take like half your profit it's i don't i still find the show entertaining it's just the most important part, entertaining part is just hearing about the different businesses mm-hmm. but sometimes you hear about something that has a lot of like it's made a lot of money but the sharks like find major faults in it mm-hmm. and it'll be like i'm selling this um this caramelized cheese oh okay well do you have any sales yeah i, I sold i sold it was 40 million dollars last year oh but you know the food industry's pretty tough we just don't think you're gonna make it yeah. okay yeah. <laughs> Or, uh, yeah, uh, your margin's only 50%. We don't like it. <laughs> they, they, I mean, they really, I mean, there's some, there was a guy men in the, in the early days, I think in the, I think, especially in the early days of the show, or maybe now also they encourage them to invest. Mm-hmm. Cause I imagine they're getting paid by the show and they're like, Hey, this show doesn't, if you don't invest in, in these, these products that these businesses, the show doesn't work. Right. Um, but what this guy's business was, I will draw a cat for you. And you just pay him like $25 to draw a cat. Mm-hmm. You tell him what do we want the cat doing? And he mails you a picture of a cat. Not like a masterpiece picture of a cat, like a cat that you would draw, Jay, with your level of artistic chat, art, 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 art artistic. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, that's, and they invested in him. You know, his business was called, I think, I think it was called, I'll draw a cat for you. What the fuck? That just you should do off. a video for Shark Tank. I mean, that just... and you have to have like you have to have like a story. Like you like you're like, oh, how did you get interested in making this card game? Well, when my mom and dad both died in a car accident, they just said right before they died, they wanted me to make a card game. Um, and my aunt and uncle also died, and I have cancer. Anyway, and I'm gonna cry right now. Please invest. My. Uh... My aunt was at a warehouse and uh, a whole rack of cards fell on her and she got buried in cards and suffocated to death. And so I dedicated my life to making a better card game that doesn't suffocate people. My mom uh, survived 9-11 because she was playing cards in her apartment, not in the World Trade Center. (laughs) Yeah, they all have stories like my uncle worked in a coal mine and I was uh, abused as a child and had to work from when I was three years old. And They all cry on the spot. It's like they're yeah. practicing crying on the spot. Like, I'm like, how do you get so emotional just pitching your business? Even if it's like connected to some like emotional story. Like, Right. Like, you know, you've pitched this business a hundred times already. You cry every single time. I'd be like, I don't want to do business with somebody this emotionally unstable. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, the reason I'm not investing is you're a crybaby. Okay, <laughs> right. I want people that aren't crybabies. You know, you sell cheese, and every time somebody mentions cheese, you hysterically break down. Probably not a good match. Ooh, we're not. Gonna, we. I don't know if we're going to hit our fourth quarter numbers. Are you going to cry now? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I. I think a lot of these people have agents now, and they're like prepped, and it's like a professional. Probably, probably true. I hadn't thought about that, but yeah, I guess if you get like it's a, it's like a game, it's a life changing thing getting on that show because like even mm-hmm. if you have a dumb idea, like, yeah, you're gonna have amazing exposure, so you probably are hiring consultants who like are getting you ready for that. Yeah, I mean uh, these people aren't like they have professional presentations. It's not like a guy like me who's just gonna like show up with my game. Like they have like you know they come out in like mini cars and like yeah, it's it's ridiculous now. 
that would be it would be great you're on there and they're like you have the rest of the game well i don't have the money to make the full prototype (laughs) you don't have the money to make a full prototype for a board game no that's why i want the investment oh do you know how much the full prototype is how much is the full prototype five hundred dollars wait what because the full prototype is them setting up the machines for mass production. They can't do a one-off. So this is like locking in like everything. So okay. to get a full so, prototype. I mean, I guess the big business is finding idiots like ourselves and making the game for us. Like mm-hmm. if you're the company making the game, you're the company, you're making money. Yeah. Yeah. From day one, you're making money because you're like, oh, well, I don't care if it sells or not. Like, I'm just going to make the game, ship it to them. They'll never sell the game, and I make money. Yeah, yeah. So why don't we do that? What, can we figure out how to make games and then sell people on how to go make their game for them? I feel like that's a little more complicated than actually making the game. What if you figure it out and do all this work, and then I come into business with you? <laughs> like every other idea? <laughs> exactly. If we could do it together, but you do the whole thing, that would be really helpful. You know what? Uh, how about Jay does all the work and we'll put my name first because just yes, Mark and yes. Jay sounds better than Jay and Mark. So In fairness, for the board game, I was really in on the work and just gave up after that. <laughs> for some of the categories. For some of the categories. <laughs> for like half the categories, maybe. Yeah, at some point I was like, Jay, how about we just make this a Would You Rather game? Jay's like, I care about the other five categories. I said, well, that makes one of us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like uh, which one. There was one you didn't even understand. You were trying to write cards and you weren't even doing it right. I think it was the taboo. I think one. it was taboo because I thought, okay, so the idea is to explain taboo, and I'll explain what I thought. I thought. So you're trying to get other people to say a word, and you're not allowed to use five other words when describing this word. I thought you were you had to give five words, and they had to guess the word from these five words. Right. I don't know how that would actually even work. I, I don't know. I thought maybe like you'd read one word at a time till they got it. I had the exact. Word. I don't know. I was just, you wrote like three cards. And I'm like, Mark, these cards don't even make sense. Like, what is this? <laughs> I was like, would you rather have good work? Um, I mean, do that category and not, or not, you use a stupid category. Um, anyway, Patrick asked us about board games. So what are your, uh, some of your other favorite board games? Are we doing a top five here? Yeah, we could do a top five. Okay, um, I'm gonna rank them, but I'm gonna give my, my my third favorite first, then my fourth favorite, then my second, then my fifth, and my first. Is that okay in order for you? Just just pick something. Um, okay, greatest board games ever. Um, I'm gonna say Monopoly being an all-time great game. It is. Uh, it's, it's long and also miserable if you're not winning, but the idea of like, Owning properties and exchanging money is a lot of fun. Did you know I have an interesting fact about Monopoly? I don't know if you know this. What is that? If you play Monopoly long enough, there's an actual end to the game. Yeah. Uh, I've heard. Uh, legend has it that uh, a Monopoly game has been finished before. I've never in my life experienced I've played Monopoly so many times, countless amount of times. I've never been involved like, in a Monopoly game where everyone was like, oh, I guess the game's over now. <laughs> you, you're it's the be... only game... Where it's totally acceptable for everyone to be like, okay, I'm bored, I'm done. (laughs) Just midway through the game, like, ah, like, let's just do something else. I can't can't play this anymore. You'll be shocked to know that I have Muppet Monopoly. I I am not shocked to to know that, but uh, (laughs) but, uh, my son got, um, he was reading, like, a couple bunch of years ago, he was reading the Harry Potter books, and he got, um, someone gave him a Harry Potter chess set, Mm -hmm. which sounds really cool. So I was like, "Oh, let's play chess." And I broke up the Harry Chet, the Harry Potter chess set and I'm like, "You don't know what any of the pieces are?" I don't know what any of the fucking pieces are. <laughs> I don't know what's the I, like I'm like, "This is idiotic. I don't know what the pieces are." <laughs> so I'm like, "Okay, we're just going to keep that in the closet till so we throw it away." <laughs> Were they they weren't even like similar shapes as the original they, chess? No, no. I mean, obviously there was a guy like a like you could read the like the key to figure out what 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 is what. Yeah, but um that's just dumb. Yeah. I don't fucking ever want to read directions. I do you like reading directions, Jay? No. For the Brink game, I actually wrote, like, I hate writing directions, you hate reading directions, so this is going to be really short. And I wrote, like, as short, as short as possible instructions. I dread, anytime I have to, like, as, as a parent, and, and living in a house and a family, whatever, I often have to put stuff together. I Anytime I have to do that, I dread it. Some people like putting stuff together, I hate it. 
And anytime I have to read the directions, I'm like, oh, even the simplest directions, I'm like, oh, fuck, I've got to read some directions. <laughs> okay, this is going to be awful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Code Words. Have you ever played that? Um. So what were code the chances names? Code names? that code game names. two, Jay picked something that no one has ever heard of? Are you, you've never heard of that. I've never heard of this. Is it code, code words? Code words. You have it right there. I do. I do. Code you buy names. it for the for the for this episode. Code names. Oh, could we just put the word the name Brink on there and sell that? <laughs> <laughs> no one even. No one's gonna be like. No one's gonna be like. If you posted that on a. If you posted that on um on 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 you did ads for that one. No one's gonna go. Isn't that code names? I went to a a board game store and bought that, and they said it was the best seller. Oh, what what is it? Explain the game. So, basically, um, you are trying to get people to find a connect. You have like a grid of different words, okay. and you have to. Uh, okay, so each person has a different color, and okay. only they know the key. So you're trying to get your team to only pick the cards uh, that are over your color and vice versa. And so you try and connect words and get as many as possible. So you're trying to say like three words and then you say one word trying to connect the three and people have to pick those three cards. Is this game more or less fun than my back injury? It's hard to explain, but uh, it's fun. It's good. Okay. Um, that sounds, uh, okay. Um, my next one, Stratego. Oh, I was going to pick that. It's a pretty good one. I, used to, I, like I haven't one. played that in many years, but I used to love that girl. Yeah, yeah, no, I like that game a lot. Yeah. Um, for people that don't know, it's like a, you're kind of like have armies versus each other, and you have to like, how, how to best describe it. Yeah, so like you're moving toward each other, and each army has a number that the opponent can't see. And so you got to right. pick which one's the go against and the higher number obviously wins or the well, maybe the lower number. I don't remember. I don't remember. It's a simple, a simple like number versus number and they don't stay. They can't see it. So you have to kind of like guess, figure out what the other person's. It's a little bit of psychology also. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. That one. That one's a good one. Um, Scategories. You ever play that one? It, is that a uh, Scategories is good, but is that a, a board game? Because I feel like, is there a board? Um. I don't think you have to have a board. Are you, like, I guess you missed the category when it said board games. I guess you didn't understand. But the then it falls under the board game category. It's a it's, it's a box it's, game. No. Oh oh you oh you thought the category was box games. <laughs> what would you call our game? James James like um jump rope. <laughs> I mean, our game would technically be a board game. It's a box game. Is it? There's like... no board. Okay, whatever. Can you have a board game without a board? Well, what would you call? What would you call like apples to apples? Um, is there a board? No, but what would you call it? I would call it a box game. People would be just, like, it's Mark, just a card what game. the fuck? It's... it's a box game. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> okay, okay. My next, my next board game is baseball. People just baseball. Are... If you go over your friends and say, "Hey, do you have any box games?" See what they say. <laughs> What's your favorite box game? But at least that makes sense. It's a game in a box or a card game. It's a card game. You know what's also in a box? Board games. What? Board games. Board games? Okay. Yeah, they're in a box. Oh, you're. Oh, do you? Oh, do you want a box game with a board or without a board? <laughs> okay. So I, I thought the cat. Why don't you? Why don't we write a message, Patrick, for next show? Um, Patrick wrote this question. Let us know if you meant a board. You meant actual board games or whatever Jay wants to put in this category. Fine. Life. You ever play Life? Yes. Um, many years. Is that a fun one? I don't remember that one being that much. Was, is that a good one? I haven't played it in so long. Uh, I don't. I remember liking it when I was a kid, but I don't know if it holds up. I'll give you one just so you're on your non. There's there is no board, mm -hmm. but um, Rummy Cube. Have you played Rummy Cube? I've never heard of Rummy Cube. Oh, because I'm playing that all the time. I play that a lot with my daughter. Um, it's really fun. It's uh. You played like you played Rummy. I Jim played Rummy. like five hundred Rummy. Yeah. Okay. So the same general Rummy principles of like trying to get like three or four in a row, mm -hmm. um, but you have tiles and you can build on other people's tiles. Um, but it's all, um, it's all numbers and different colors. But you can basically you put everything out like kind of like 
there's no actual board to be perfecting out in front of you, like a kind of like a Scrabble without the, without the board. You kind of like I'll put I'll put like a two like three fours, put them out, and then someone else can add another four. Or you can add to it basically. Okay. Um, but it's not actual. I think it's more of a box. It's a a a, a tile. Okay, we'll stick to ones that have boards just to make you happy. <laughs> You're just so crazy about this whole board thing. <laughs> okay. Um. I said okay. So the next one I'd say is uh chess. Okay. Does chess count as a as a board game? Yeah, I would say right. It's, it's on, on a board. board. It's on a literal chess board. Yeah. Classic. Always a fun game. Mm-hmm. Um, you ever play Chinese checkers? Yeah. Is with that the, the one with the uh, the balls? Yeah, you get the little like marbles and you got to move them around. Yeah, yeah. I think I had one of those sets where it was like it was Chinese check. It was like a bunch of different games, including Chinese checkers. Okay. Yeah, I, I like that uh, one a lot. That's that you put that like in your top five of all time. The, the Chinese themselves are embarrassed about this game. Like they don't even want this associated with their people. And you're like, ooh, little marbles move around. That's my that's my top five. <laughs> I don't know, like um Mousetrap. You're really reaching now. I am. I am. <laughs> okay, Jay, you know what? You can do games that are in boxes also. We'll expand the category so you don't pick shit for the, for the top five. <laughs> I, I will say cranium is one of my favorites. Candyland. <laughs> cranium is one of my favorites. Oh, okay. Were you prob- mocking Cranium like five seconds ago? Well, my problem is it takes too long. Okay. Yeah. Well, if we're going to do like box games, um, would you put, if you had to put top five, would you put Apples to Apples or Cards Against Humanity? Which one would you put in there? I'd put Apples to Apples. Why? I feel like when you play Cards Against Humanity, there is there's certain cards that just always win because they're a lot funnier than the other cards. Yeah. And so you don't really have to be creative with like a, a dozen different cards. It's just like, oh, I got this card. I'm going to win this round. Right, right. You get something like the like giant gorilla pussy lips. Okay, yeah. well, that's going to probably win the category. Right, right. So uh-huh. like I feel like you have to be a little more creative with apples to apples. So I, I do like it a little better. When I've, I also, like the first time or two I played Cards Against Humanity, I, I was like, oh, this is the funniest shit ever. And then the more I played it, I'm like, yeah, the same cards are winning every time. The shock factor, like some of the joke stuff wears off a little bit. So like also Apples to Apples is just more playable. Like it's it's also nice like like I like the jokes and um jokes, but it's also nice to like I can play a wider audience with, with Apples to Apples. Like yeah. I, can, I can involve my kids in Apples to Apples, that's fine. Cards against humanity are like, okay, well now I have to make sure like no old people or no young people are involved. Right. Right. Yeah. That's um, fair. What's your next one? Shoot some ladders? <laughs> I was more of a Candyland type of... Okay. Um, You're not going to put... Um, I didn't like this game, but a lot of people love this game. I don't know if you love this game also. I never actually even learned how to play it. Um, Risk. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I never learned how to play that game. And that's one of the games where I know people were like super into that game. Yeah, no, I, I loved Risk. Um, I actually almost got into a fist fight over Risk. My Was the argument like that, like you're like, this is an actual board game and your shit is not a board game. <laughs> My friend's little brother was a loose cannon and um, I, I attacked one of his countries and I just had this insane streak of rolling high numbers and i basically wiped him out on the very first turn of the game and he just snapped and started swinging at me <laughs> that's pretty funny um that's pretty funny the uh why was there never a risk movie was there ever a movie for that i don't think so i mean I, I feel like you'd be able to do a lot more with that than like battleship and there was a battleship movie i'll, I'll give you the uh which was a good movie by the way battleship it's battleship okay it's battleship a board game i guess it's kind of because you kind of have a board yeah yeah I would okay, I'm say. Gonna, yeah i'm gonna give you um the for my next one i'm also gonna give you the best board game ever made into a movie see so if okay. you can guess this the best board game ever made into a movie they made a movie out of this board game it's hands down the best i don't know i also can't name too many board games that were turned into movies but this is hands down the best one better than battleship yeah, by the way, why was there like a Monopoly movie? That's just life. 
<laughs> oh, uh, a movie about rich assholes. That sounds great. Right. A board game that was made into a movie. Yeah, I can't we, believe you can't believe you don't know this. That we haven't mentioned. I, I'll give you I uh, give you just give you the movie is from I believe the eighties. Maybe hmm. late eighties. I forget exactly. Comedy, very funny. Oh, Clue. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good one. Yeah. Great game and great movie, and I'm fairly certain the best board game ever turned into a movie. Yeah, it's that or Battleship. Is Battleship really a good movie? Come on. I liked it. <laughs> I've never seen it, um, but I already know without seeing it, it's probably not a good movie. <laughs> I It was surprisingly good. Did they um? Don't spoil it for me. Did they? But actually, spoil it for me. Did they sink his battleship? <laughs> Did you ever see Pacific Rim? Um, I've not seen that one either. But that's okay. It's in the vein of that. Okay. It's it's a big he... dumb action movie, but uh, I, it was like surprisingly good. Okay. I mean, I, I I like I. Sometimes big dumb action movies are just fun and just good. It's just yeah. uh funny like uh. Yeah, people get I mean... all worked up about these movies. Like, oh, this didn't stay true to like the original material or something sometimes i just like a big dumb action movie i've liked all the transformer movies okay i find like so speaking of like big dumb action movies made of very little like um like pirates of the caribbean that movie you like pirates of the caribbean i really like the first one i think i only saw up to two or three i know there's okay, like so six or seven at this point but uh, forget about all the sequels the first one's a really good movie yeah I think most people today don't even realize it was based on a ride at Disneyland. Like when people see the ride, they're like, oh, they made a ride based on the movie. No, the movie's based on the ride. Oh, I, the didn't, been... I, I didn't know. I thought it was vice versa too. No. Oh, you didn't know that? Okay. Yeah. But versus they, then they recently made um, like, um, like River Crew. Like there was one with uh, another ride movie. Um, Carous- Jungle, Jungle, Jungle Cruise. Oh, okay. I was going to say Carousel, the movie. Oh, well, Jungle Cruise. Apparently, it's a terrible movie. And people are like, why is it so terrible? It's based on a ride with no story. <laughs> right. The ride is 35 seconds long. i done the ride. It really is a short ride. There's nothing to the goddamn ride. <laughs> I, I, they're just out of ideas. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess they were like, well, Pirates of the Caribbean did well. What's another popular Disney ride we could milk? Space Mountain. I'm surprised there hasn't been a Space Mountain movie. I mean, at least that sounds cool. Um, I went on Space Mountain for the first time earlier this year. Oh, Have really? you ever gone on it? Yeah, in like 1987. Okay. Um, it was. I, I think I had a really big build. I, maybe we talked about this earlier in the year. But I thought it was going to be like some giant roller coaster because mm-hmm. it's like a very famous like. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that was it. It's just like in the dark and like mildly entertaining. Yeah, yeah. It, but at least you had to wait like an hour to do it. Well, everything, if you wait, I, we had the, they have like the fast passes now. So you like, you wait like just shorter. Mm-hmm. Uh, Disney World's a whole like hell on earth type thing where you go, where like it's capitalism that's worst. I, I don't know how people go every year. I really don't. I, I don't know. I, I really like, uh, it, like if you go every year or something, there was a whole article I was, um, I was reading about how people now are going into debt to go to Disney. I like, really like enjoyed it. I thought it was amazing. Uh, you know, I was like, nine or ten when you're a kid you're kind of it's uh, kind of mind-blowing but i've yeah. also never ever said you know i'm gonna go back i feel like i i went on every ride and i saw it and i'm like okay if you had kids you might want to take your kids i guess um i feel like i'd rather like, just go to six flags if you go like first thing in the morning you get on every ride before everybody else shows up and you're done within like 30 minutes yeah um there's a lot of really good ways to waste your money with as a parent Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one seems excessively expensive, though. No, yeah, Disney World's like just stupid. Um, but yeah, um, are we are we done with the board games? Any think, other board yeah. games that we yeah. haven't said that were really good? I think we, I think we covered. I think we killed it. Are we, you know, we didn't the honorable mentions. Mm-hmm. Checkers. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, checkers I would say checkers. It's a classic. I, I, I did. What about checkers? What are you saying? It's a classic. They they call it the the U.S. Um, Chinese checkers. <laughs> no, I I, 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 like, can't, I like checkers. Would you okay? Now that you remember checkers, would you put um, Chinese checkers or checkers first? Mm, 
And remember, you live in America. Yeah, probably regular checkers. Just for like, it's fun sometimes to just play a quick game that takes like five minutes. Okay, would you put checkers or chess? Which one would you like? Which, which is you? Which is like a? Give me your. Would you? Would you rather play? I probably play rather play checkers. I know what. I know it sounds like I'm a dumbass, but um, sometimes just a quick fun game is you know. Okay, your your friends are coming over tonight. Adult friends, you can play one game with them tonight. What game is it? The Brink of Sanity card game. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> I feel like of the of the party games, Apple's Apples is probably the best party game. Yeah. Yeah. Next to the Brick of Sanity game, which will be the far superior. Yes. Um, what else is going on, Jay? Oh, you know, actually, no, one more thing I wanted to mention, basically, from my back injury and everything else. Mm-hmm. I have a question for you, Jay. Okay. Have you ever in your entire life gone to get drugs from a pharmacist and had the pharmacist offer to give any information at all about the drug Mm, i don't think so like they're trained they go to school to know how drugs work Mm -hmm. all i see them do is they on the little thing with your credit card they'll just they'll mark off for you did not um um, declined Mm -hmm. to ask for advice that's all they've learned in their four years of pharmaceutical school is how to tell the pay the customer you need to decline asking us for advice. Yeah, they they do it for you now. I did notice that they used to be like pick one and and then hold their breath, hoping you wouldn't ask any questions. And now they're just like, yeah, we're not going to answer your question. Should they say like, um, hey Jay, um, here are the drugs. Do you need any consultation on the drugs? They probably Instead started of giving doing you the that. Goddamn thing. They probably started doing that, and it was just the worst experience ever. Everybody had questions and they said you know what fuck it we're just gonna say no i bet i assume like in the early days like in the 1950s i bet you went to your pharmacist and he was like like an, an encyclopedia about the drugs he'd tell you everything he'd ask you a lot of questions and then little by little capitalism came more and more and they're like do not let the customers ask questions just get their money and move them on 1950s they probably went to your house and delivered it to you <laughs> 1950s they were like we don't. We haven't invented real drugs yet, but like, we'll tell you all about them. <laughs> yeah, you want a free lobotomy? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like they they even check off for you, as you said. Um, you've declined. Well, sir, I I haven't declined. When I was paying the other day, um, yes, when I was paying for the drug um, drugs the other day, I checked on them like, no, I have not declined. And the guy was like, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, st- same result. <laughs> same result. I, I checked off. I did not decline. Yeah, well, it wasn't a real option. Sorry, sir. <laughs> that that button's just for show. I would like to see, like, I, I don't want like, why do they even, like, why are they even going to pharmaceutical school if they're not going to explain anything about the drugs? I don't know. Yeah, it seems like, um, seems kind of like a broken system, like the rest of our healthcare. Okay, so this is part of my, um, I'm building a platform for whatever presidential candidate wants, wants it. And so far, we have things like three, three, the three horn, um, three uses of your horn a year, um, and the uh, now I'm going to add, we're going to force pharmaceutical ph- pharmacists to explain drugs to you. <laughs> little by little, we're going to win over America. Also, we're storing um, all homeless people can now live in a uh, um, in a uh, in any 24 hour gym. Uh, I, I, what's the what's the one? Uh, the ten dollar one a month. Planet Fitness. Planet we're Fitness. Gonna, the whole we're gonna solve the homeless problem by letting the homeless people live in Planet Fitness. I mean, it is cheaper than uh, giving them hotels. No, we, we, <laughs> I, I, I've done this on the talked about this on the show before, but like, what are your fitness goals? Um, to have a roof over my head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so there was a there was a guy in Miami, and he he. Started a pizza place, but what okay. he did is he picked the same name as the most famous pizza place in the area, and also he didn't know how to make pizza, so he was just taking the orders from the real pizza place, and sometimes he would just put dough in a box, sometimes it would be an empty box, sometimes it would... Oh, I thought he was going to buying pizza from the other place and just selling it. No, he's just... 
No, he was just he putting just... whatever he had in a box and pretending to be the other place and running away before they opened the pizza box and collecting money. Why and... wouldn't you just learn how to make pizza? This is the shittiest scam ever. Well, I mean, it'll cost you need pizza ovens and a storefront. Like this guy was literally just rerouting the orders and <laughs> showing up. And so this other place was getting bad reviews, getting reported to the Better Business Bureau. And this was going on for years. And they finally but caught him. Years? Years. I mean, a pizza, how much is a pizza? Like $15, $20? You're not, this is not a, like, a big area to make your money in. You're not Tony Soprano of the fake pizza industry. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess if you're, if you're getting 20 bucks a pizza and you're, you're putting almost you're, nothing in the box, it's pretty good. Well, you still have to get the boxes and, like, you have to deliver them. Yeah. It's, I... I mean, it's the most popular pizza place in in, in the area, so he was probably like you're to... like uh, like a, you're like best Miami Miami Miami's top uh, Miami pizza, but Miami pizza now, and you're like you're intercepting all, you're intercepting. I guess they're calling you accidentally is the idea. Yeah, yeah. So um, so yeah. Apparently, he put bad, uncooked pizzas in a box. Sometimes it was just a box of raw dough. He'd give it to them, and by the time they'd realize he was gone, and police said this has been going on, been ongoing for several years. <laughs> Why? I mean, everything about that is just he's buy he's going to the trouble of buying dough, but just not, not learning how to make a pizza. Like yeah. he, could, be, he could just make a pizza. He doesn't have to have a big pizza. He can make he can make Elios and put it in the goddamn box. Well, I mean, sometimes it said bad and uncooked. So maybe he was putting frozen pizza in some of them. Maybe he got too many orders some days. So he just had to throw some raw dough in there. Why don't you just deliver empty boxes with like newspaper in them well, while you're at it? I mean, you'd have to get the weight and the distribution correct. Where people are going to know immediately. You need them to know just long enough to close their door so you can run away. Oh, yeah, I guess you're like, you have to give the pizza to the person. Like, I guess you're not leave, like, leaving on the doorstep. Right. So, yeah, it has to have the weight and the distribution of an actual pizza. Right. And they, they know it's you because you've shown up at their place. So like, there's an eyewitness to every theft. There is. But, I mean, would you be if somebody handed you something real quick and ran away, like, would you be, be able to identify that guy? Well, I mean, the first part would be like, he ran away. Oh, well, how are we going to find him? Well, I called them, so I have their number. He probably just didn't... How did the police not catch this guy? I don't know. Like... For years. For years. <laughs> um, I don't know how we're going to catch this person. Well, I have the phone number right here. You can just call them, and they'll deliver, they'll deliver the, the, the criminal to your establishment, to the police station. Um, <laughs> right. That's, that's... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how they didn't catch him. I don't know how it took years. But, How did you bring down this thing? Well, we called the number. We ordered a pizza to the to police station. And um, anyway, we are awesome at cracking cases. <laughs> yeah, record time. 30 minutes or less, we cracked the case. This is how all, all their all their crimes are cracked like this. They're, they're like, um, um, 1-800, I'm like, we called up 1-800 arson. And the arsonists just came to the, came to the, came to the police station. We arrested them. <laughs> so I like that one. Um, cool. Um, I got one for you. Okay. Uh, well, actually, not not. This is not a new story, but I was trying to think about like how to make. I was gonna. I, I was gonna propose a top five, but I didn't do it. I was gonna say top five ways we could tell the other person how to improve their lives. But I was um. I was stuck on one. Only I only had one idea. Mm -hmm. So you want to just hear my top one? Sure. It, this is just advice for you. Okay. And advice really for all our listeners. Mm -hmm. They say, they say basically, comparison is the thief of joy. Have you heard that, Jay? No. Do you know what I'm talking about when I say comparison is the thief of joy? No. Okay. It's a famous statement. Basically, the idea is that when you compare your life to others, like you look online mm -hmm. on Facebook, you see other people are having fun, mm -hmm. and you get like, you're like, oh, shit, they all went out tonight, and I'm just watching Blacklist. Um, or maybe you're, maybe you're Jay, you post Blacklist, because you, you're yourself watching Blacklist on Facebook, and people are like, oh, man, he's watching Blacklist without me. He's already on um, season but... nine, and I'm only on season two. Don't tell me what happens. Uh, so anyway, so the idea is basically the more you try to keep up with the Jones, the more your life kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. So if, like, 
if Jay and I are talking and I'm like, Jay, I'm going to ri- drive in my Ferrari, Jay's going to be like, oh, my life sucks. So you, what you want to do, and they say basically, you don't want to have rich friends if you're not rich. On the other hand, Jay, would you say, are you rich? No. Well, I think you are rich compared to homeless people. Mm-hmm. So if you had friends who are homeless, they would look at you like you're rich and you're killing it. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, Jay, tell us again what it's like to have indoor plumbing. So you're saying all those homeless people would just be uh, on Facebook? <laughs> no, you hang out with them in IRL, Jay, in real life. Okay? Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I guess I guess homeless people on, well, we're giving them the homeless people Facebook. We're just not get ready to give them homes. I don't think they'd be impressed at my absolutely normal life. I think they would. They'd be like, wait, what do you call it again? That place that refrigerates your food? A refrigerator? Holy shit. How do you have this, Jay? I mean, they're not retarded. <laughs> well, you, you, wouldn't you feel a little better about yourself, Jay, well, at the expense of the homeless people? No. <laughs> Jay's like, I made the guy's life better by giving him a $5 bill. Look what I did for the world. My advice to you would be no more pull-ups with weighted <laughs> discs in your backpack. You think that's a bad idea, Jay? Maybe just normal pull up Maybe just add five reps. I, I I just I'm gonna go back to normal pull ups if I ever can yeah. sleep again. Yeah. But um, it's also like if you look at like Jay, you may not think you're wealthy, but you know, based on the, the entire world's population, you're probably in the top ten percent of the world. Okay. So does that make you feel better? Like you're you you would now have more money than all the people in India who have like eight dollars to their name. Okay. All right. Okay, you feel better about yourself. Yeah. Until I. Uh... Order 2,000 units of the Brink game and I'm bankrupt. <laughs> <clears throat> um, is there any way we can like uh, get the uh, the Brink game on the uh, crypto? Like on the uh, like so so like somehow we could sell it to people eventually like as a as a crypto coin. Are you just making up things? How do you get a <laughs> board game? On I it? haven't slept in a fucking week, Jay. <laughs> I am just <laughs> there's a blockchain. Put the game on the blockchain, and then people are like, oh, well, I don't want to buy the game. Well, you could buy the game because it's going to go up in value because it's on the blockchain. I mean, you could probably make a Brink game NFT. Yeah. But didn't everybody already find out NFTs are scam? Andy Milanakis scammed millions of dollars of NFTs. Did he? Yeah. What was, his, what was the story? He made Andy Milanakis NFTs. And he said he was going to do things with them and uh, add things to them. And people bought Andy Milanakis NFTs. Well, I guess like if you're buying an NFT, you're, you're just like, I'm selling a picture. I'm going to buy the picture of Andy Not Milanakis. Where's the scam? Out of all the pictures you could buy, you're going to buy an Andy Milanakis NFT. Well, I guess the scam would be connected to he said he was going to deliver things you could you can use the... the uh the picture for it's Andy fucking Milanakis. It's of course it's a scam. I mean, you don't, you don't, Jay, how much money did you lose in this? <laughs> That's why the game isn't out yet. I, I have to start from scratch again. Yeah, I, as soon as I finish selling my Andy Milanakis NFTs, I'll have the money for the game, <laughs> right? That's why I'm doing Kickstarter. I lost all my money on Andy Milanakis NFT. I can't believe we talked all this about scams, and then we didn't talk about two years ago where just digital pictures were worth thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars. I know. We did so many episodes on crypto, which is still around, and we barely mentioned NFTs, which was a clear scam the very first day it came out. The moment people were like, well, you have a unique picture, and people were like, could I just like, right, like left-click and like copy or right-click copy? And they're like, well, no, pay me money for my game, secret buy my code. picture. It's got a secret code. It's got a secret code. You can do all this stuff with it. Like if you get all of them, it'll unlock bankruptcy for you. You could you could turn a hundred dollars into four dollars. Yeah, I mean this stuff can go up. Like, can you imagine? Like you, they even did a. It was player cards. It was like trading cards. Like mm-hmm. instead of having a basketball card, you had an NFT of a basketball card. Yeah, and this will be really valuable, like one day, unless in, unless of course you take the the basketball cards and put them into your digital uh, bicycle, and you uh, you ruin them that way. <laughs> so, um, 
yeah, I, I, I don't feel bad for anybody who bought an Andy Milanakis NFT. I don't feel bad for anyone who lost money on NFTs. I kind of feel like you're like, um, yeah, that was screaming scam. Like, yeah. there's no greater scam than that. Yeah. I feel I feel bad for people that like fall for like the Nigerian like your Nigerian uncle left you millions of dollars. I feel that is like at least you had to really fall for something. Right. Like some of those are pretty elaborate and could be a little bit believable. Like NFTs were never like, oh yeah, maybe there's something to uh secret coded internet pictures. I was reading about some of the scams. Like I was like reading about these scams. Like, well, I'm gonna have a story about like in the New York Times or something, and I was like I had to talk to my dad after this because I was like, I want to make sure he doesn't fall for it. And the scam, the basic of the scam was they like something happens to your bank account and they say they tell you that like, oh, we're gonna need the, the bank is gonna get the FBI involved and the hackers are trying to like infiltrate your your bank account. But if you work with the FBI, we're gonna get the hackers. And over many many months, they just drain your bank account basically. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't and like people don't realize for like a year or two that they were like. They, they think they're part, part of like some like some way to get the hackers with the FBI. So I, like, I, I told my dad, but I'm like, I'm also pretty sure with my dad, the hackers would just give up and send him money not so they don't have to seek them anymore. I mean, when I first started my new job, I got a text and it said, hey, it's and it was like the name of the, the CEO of the company and the company name. And it knew my name. And I was That's like, pretty. Yeah. That I was like, that's wild. The only reason I immediately knew is because that happened at my last job as well. And well, the, pe people click on these links also all the time. Yeah. So, well, he, it wasn't a link. He was just like, uh, you know, do you have a minute? I, I need you to do something for me. And I, I know the scam. They, he's, uh, he's away and he needs uh, gift cards and you have to buy gift cards and read them the barcode and he'll pay you back. And then they just cash out the gift card and disappear. Yeah, I remember I was working with someone like for work. I was working with like a can't like a someone someone with work. Um, and he sent me an email saying he was trapped with like um he had gotten robbed in Spain and needed money. And I was like, I was just talking to him. I didn't realize he was even in Spain. I got confused for a second mm -hmm. until I, I was like, I, I called the guy. I was like, um, I got this email. I just thought it was funny. I'm like, okay, the uh, the CEO of this multi million dollar corporation is texting me to to buy gift cards at a, at a Walmart. Like, yeah, that makes sense. I they, the, the scams generally though, they become more and more elaborate. Like people, I was also, I was listening to a, like a podcast that like the, in, did a lot of investigation on like the other side of these. Mm -hmm. Cause you always like, like, like when the people do the scams, you're like, well, these people are assholes that are trying to scam me. Yeah. And it turns out at least in Mexico and I think other countries also, like the local gangs or mafia have gotten involved in it. And so the people that are trying to scam you, if they don't scam you, they're li like, if they don't scam enough people, their lives are at risk. Hmm. So now you're like, oh, well, this is all fucked. Yeah, that's not great. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, you're like, I don't feel like I'm like, well, are you just let me know, like, are you just trying to scam me or is your, or is, are, are you going to be shot? You could killed if you don't scam me. Right, right. That's okay, great. Crazy. That's that's one because I guess basically it's they the the local gangs have figured out like I think the drug cartels down in Mexico have realized it's another area where they can get involved in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have, they haven't screwed up uh, enough areas of society. We get yes. get in on that. Too. Yes. Um, also, there's a mayoral candidate in Wyoming, um, and they are running. They created an AI bot that will run the government. Nobody would notice. His, that is his platform. There's like six candidates, and this candidate said, I've created this virtual chatbot um, based on like ChatGPT um, um, for, for the government, and I promise this chatbot will run the government for me if you elect me. I will not make any decisions. The chatbot will do everything. Honestly, let's give it a shot at this point. <laughs> Think of all the uh, money that would be – we would probably save like $500 billion a year – the and bot it, said it did not have any political affiliations, and its goal is to focus on data-driven practical solutions that benefit the community. Works for me. Yeah, I almost kind of want I, like I hear that. I'm like, I think I might have to vote for the machine. <laughs> they said, according to Human Factor, involving humans and having to make decisions that affect so many people is like um, 
it, it makes things worse. So like, we we just need a machine that like, understands straightforward calculations. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm. So if you can write it, could, would you write in ChatGPT over um over Kamala or uh, Trump? Yeah, hundred percent. Okay. I might um, actually. Any more? Any other stories, Jack? Uh, I do have two real quick. Uh, I did the pizza one. So. Uh, this Tasmanian woman is, uh, she got arrested, uh, because she was caught with a live, uh, with a sex act with a live fish on a boat. Wow. That's a crazy country they live in that you don't let people do that. So, so my question is, why would you film that and distribute that? Because she's also in trouble for distribution. <laughs> So, like, I mean, besides the whole point of fucking a fish, I don't know how that would work. How did she, well, does the story include the video? Because I kind of want to watch the video now. <laughs> I mean, no, it doesn't. Uh, apparently, she was 55 when she made a, a sex act with a trout. I don't know what two, the sex act would be. Two girls, one trout? Uh, but now she's 58 and she is um, she is being arraigned for two counts of reproducing bestiality product and three counts of possessing a bestiality product. So apparently this was part of a series. <laughs> Maybe she's trying to get all the different fish. Maybe she has a salmon one. Slam and salmon. Why did you keep doing this? Have you ever heard of a trilogy? <laughs> Slam and salmon. That's an actual movie, by the way. It's an actual bestiality movie. No, no, it's a it's a comedy by the guys oh. who did Super Troopers, and they're like, oh, wait, is that they're waiters. is that funny? I, uh, it's been in my queue for like five years, and I haven't seen it yet. Oh, someone told me that. Someone told me recently that was pretty funny. I, I heard that that was like their arguably their funniest movie. So I mean, Super Troopers I thought was really funny. Yeah, I couldn't get more than ten minutes into Super Troopers too. Two. Oh yeah, yeah. You liked number one though, right? Yeah, yeah. I actually saw that in the theaters in college, and they showed up to the theater and gave everybody in the theater handcuffs, and they were all like awkward, and just oh. like, it was like, "Hey, we made a movie. I hope you like it." And That's pretty cool, though. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. Um, but it's actually that's really cool, actually. Um, any more stories about? I, I'm running out of gas. Um, yeah. Any more stories no. about fish fucking? Uh, no, but there was there was a man who complained about his son's smelly feet, and his son shot his dad in the face because of it. Okay, you picked like a happy story for the end. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna leave on that note. <laughs> Great story. Just play the goodbye music. I just, I just like the uh, the title is Iowa man allegedly shoots his father in the face after complaint about smelly feet. You know, like in the real story, there's probably a lot behind that. But I really hope, just for the story, it was just like, "Hey, son, your your feet kind of smell." That <laughs> boom, like just like picking up a notch out of. I also like how they have to say allegedly. It's like, does the guy have a bullet in his face or not? <laughs> it's... I I do find the allegedly sometimes a little bit uh, a little right. bit much. Yeah, do, do we need allegedly in cases like that where the guy clearly has been shot in the face? Yes, like we we get is he allegedly dead? Is there allegedly is he allegedly a ghost? They just do that with everything. Mike Did Tyson his feet allegedly, allegedly smell. <laughs> they do that for every like fight. Mike Tyson allegedly knocked out uh, Jake Paul or whatever. Like it's like no, you we should, we saw the fight. Like you should have to throw the word like as part of like a game. Have to throw the word allegedly in the most awkward places. <laughs> like you just talk to a coworker like, um, oh, what day is that meeting? Them boss called. Um, oh, um, our alleged boss called called it on Wednesday. <laughs> I mean, it's allegedly Monday today. So, <laughs> all right. On that note, thanks for listening, everybody. Um, if you want to email us, thebrinkofsanity at gmail dot com, uh, patreon dot com slash thebrinkofsanity, uh, brinkofsanity three on Twitter. And uh, by the way, we should point out just a PSA um, on a very serious note, like smelly feet. Um, you should not shoot a family member over smelly feet. I know we joked about that mm -hmm. and made a little bit of comedy about it, but shooting a family member over smelly feet 
is a no no. Yeah. Okay. Not... No no mur- no murder over smelly feet. Okay. We we don't want anybody shooting their father in the face over smelly feet and blaming the Brink of Sanity podcast. Right. And you may say like, well, what if their feet smell really bad? Mm-hmm. And, and I'll be like, allegedly. <laughs> And uh, if you type in Brink of Sanity on Kickstarter, the game will come up. If you want to check that out, I'll also put a link in the show notes. And you could follow us on uh, Facebook and Instagram as well. If we happen to, I mean, I know we have like three fans. If one of them happens to be just really rich and can just waste money, can you please just give Jay the money? money? Because don't you want to see what happens next in this game? Yeah, I mean. Get Jay fully funded. Let's see what happens next. Multiple expansion packs. Yeah. Good stuff. So uh, keep yeah. the brink story rolling. 20, 20 grand. That's what we need. So um, thank you for listening, and we will be back soon. All right. Goodbye, buddy. Bye, everybody. Goodbye.